Hello, welcome to another On Topic show. I'm John Testa, County Legislator for District 1, representing the city of Peekskill, the towns of Cortland and Yorktown. This uh, show is really de dedicated to one topic, and that is uh, an interview with our county executive, Rob Astorino. Every few years, we sit down with him and go through some of the main uh, issues and goals that have been uh, attempted and uh, reached over the last few years. And this is no exception, and we had a great sit down with the county executive, and we discussed many of the top uh, subjects that are on many people's minds and issues that are in the news every day, such as Indian Point. We also talked about our um, seven years in a row of no tax increases, some of the major projects around the county, the North 60 biotech uh, project, the barge fight that we just found out uh, we were successful in uh, suspending, and a number of other issues such as uh, Sustainable Westchester, our new partnership with alternative energy sources and, and helping throughout the county. So it was a good interview and I uh, hope you enjoy it. And here it is now. Rob, thanks for being on the show again. Thank you, John. It's been a couple of years. Yeah. And we get together every once Why in a while. Why are we doing this every month? Uh, we should. <laughs> <laughs> so much going on, we could yeah, probably. We could. <laughs> but uh, again, thanks for uh, taking the time, uh, busy schedule Anytime. to talk about uh, Westchester and everything we've been doing, especially up by me in the northern part. Well, and you, you were right, everything we have been doing. You've yes. been very much a part of it, so thank you. Thank you. And we've been doing it in a bipartisan mm -hmm. way, which yeah. obviously things wouldn't get done if we couldn't do it that way. Right. So, uh, a little bit opposite of Washington. Yeah, yeah. So we have our uh, like-minded uh, yeah. friends on the other side who help us on various issues. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to, uh, to let people know that that's how we get things done. Yep. So we came in together, right? That's right. Uh, we ran. This is now ending our uh, my fourth term, yep. your, your second term. And uh, we've been able to keep taxes flat since day one, as you uh, pledge. So why don't you elaborate on that? Well, um, and why do we want to keep doing this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's crazy out there. Yeah, it is. Um, I know um, it's probably the same reason why you do it, right? right. Because we, we care about our community, and we certainly didn't like the direction things were going last time before we got here. And, and I think we've made a big difference. Yeah. We really have, whether it's your district specifically or countywide. Uh, the taxes were out of control, and it has a detrimental effect on homeowners. You know, the vast middle class, they're getting it from every direction right now. And, you know, we dealt with this argument right at the budget time where there were some who would say, just raise taxes 2%. Oh, what's 2%? Right. You know, just a cup of coffee a day. Mm -hmm. Well, that argument has led to the county right. being the highest tax in America between schools and the right. county and municipalities. And our 2% alone, if we had just raised 2%, now, as you know, we cut the county tax levy right. 2% right. and we held it flat, zero increases for the other six years. So we're going in the opposite direction. Right. And if we're the worst, and being the highest tax county in America means we're the worst, right. then why would we make it even worse? Right. So we have uh, lived within our means. And if we had just raised it 2% each year, that is cumulatively $413 million taken out of the economy and given to politicians to figure out where to go with that money. And next year, if we had just raised taxes another two percent, right. that money goes from four hundred and thirteen million to five hundred and twenty-four million, right. and it's over thirteen hundred dollars for a family. Yeah. So it, it really adds up quickly, and quite frankly, between the seniors who I talk to all right. the time, and their message is loud and clear. A bunch of them yesterday, actually. <laughs> yes, and we were together in Cortland. Yeah, yeah. Do not raise taxes because they're trying to stay in their homes, and you know they're on fixed incomes. All the young couples moving in, and we're, we're grateful for that. They've got bills all over the place. Small businesses, you know, so the argument is, to me, not a valid one where we're already spending more. But we have, you know, you, me, and, and the majority that put this together, we have a budget today in real dollars that is less than when we both came into office. That's significant and rare in government. But yet, the services aren't suffering. Well, that, that you know, money is going to where it should be going into, whether it's to help those most in need, you know, job creation and business development. Uh, we're just doing it better and smarter and more efficient. And yeah, we got 15% less employees, but the job's getting done 
quicker. And instead of money going towards pensions right. for people who retired 20 years ago or who will retire, it's going towards people right. who actually need it. Yeah, and, and being in leadership the way I've been the last, this is my fourth year as the minority leader, I've been very intimately involved in the mm -hmm. budget process and people need to know that a lot of thought goes in, uh, budgets aren't put together no. th that quickly or that easily and in fact, it, there's a lot of hard decisions. It starts in June. Yes. I mean we just sent a letter out to all of our commissioners about what the parameters that we expect for the right. budget. No tax increase, we'll start right. with that and that means they're going to be disciplined. It's not okay good we can spend like crazy what they did in the past and throw on the wish list. Right. It's what do we need to get done to accomplish the mission. If there's something you really think is important let right. us know we'll right. discuss it. Right. But it starts now and then it culminates when the board negotiates with the right. administration. You make changes and ultimately a board passes a budget that I can sign. Yeah, because it would be easy just to say, you know, raise the taxes, give everybody what they ask for, yeah. keep things the same, don't cut back, right. don't tighten the belt a little bit. Mm -hmm. And families have to do it, all, do the it time, all the time. And we can't uh, just indiscriminately right. add money to our budget. So. I think we've done a great job with that and we'll continue to do that. That's our pledge. <laughs> That's our pledge, all right. And speaking of taxes and implications, um, as you know, and a bit, it's for the whole county, but really it's my district is Indian Point That's and the announcement and that's yep. a scary thing for the communities that I represent tax-wise as right. well as businesses and jobs and, and really the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a scary time. You know, this is an issue that's going to affect all of Westchester, but specifically yeah. where you live in and where I used to live in northern right. Westchester. And, you know, when you take something, a commodity, a necessity, and you take 25% of it away, you know, you, you just have basics in math and you realize that there's going to be a problem. And so if you take 25% of the energy that is produced for Westchester and New York City, 9 million people, and you stop doing that, Price is going to go up, and we already pay right. extraordinarily high Con Ed or NYSIG bills. You put 1,000 people out of work at Indian Point right. and about 2,000 people that do business with right. Indian Point. You now have a nuclear waste cemetery that will be on site for anywhere from six decades to forever. Right. And for the environmentalists, and I'm one of them and you're one of them, right. you have zero carbon emissions now, and you're going to replace it with fossil fuels. All of this done without any environmental impact study, which is required by state law. So the governor cuts a deal with Entergy to close Indian Point. And, you know, from Entergy's perspective, I'm sure some of it was financial. Yeah. Some of it was they just cried uncle. Yeah. You know, they're done dealing with a state that... Time to leave to New York. Yeah, basically. that's, that's <laughs> killing them every yeah. day. But I'm really concerned about the people in the Hendrick Hudson School District this is going to be devastating to the village of Buchanan, yep. to the town of Cortland, and, you know, and the peripheral areas like Peekskill and other right. areas that we have to deal with. And then every ratepayer is going to deal with increased electric bills that are already the highest in the nation. So it's a really difficult situation. The governor's plan that this will be all fixed in four years. They're going to shut down Indian Point, And we're going to have, by the way, now imported energy. Yeah. We take it from our backyard. Actually, from another country. From another, yeah, from another country in <laughs> right. Canada. And they're going to run a cord down the banks of the Hudson River or along the right-of-ways near railroad tracks. There's going to be no legal issues, yeah. no fights whatsoever. We're going to get it done in four years. Yeah. And by the way, that's half of the replacement energy. The rest, we're just going to have to conserve, conserve energy. I mean, there's no realistic approach to this. So I sued. Right. Uh, unfortunately, it was eight willing to sue as a county legislature, yeah. nine that did not. It, unfortunately, it went right down party lines. So I sued individually and as county yeah. executive. It's not costing the taxpayers anything, but there's a huge issue yeah. because there's too many, you know, livelihoods at stake here. What upset me about it, Rob, was uh, when it was first announced mm -hmm. and we found out about it in the by luck in the newspaper. Yeah. Um, and I made some calls to the state, and actually some, some of the state senators were calling me. Yes. Yeah. Senator Murphy called me to find out if this is the real deal or yeah. not, or it's just some New York Times story that, you You're know, right. we don't know if it's real. Um, but it was real, and then I was able to reach out um, 
to some of the other uh, representatives in Albany and come to find out the only thing that they really thought about when they did this was we shut down Indian Point right. and well we had the energy. I said well, what about all the other things? Mm -hmm. Yes we had the school district losing 30 percent, Buchanan losing 50 percent of their tax base. Yep. But there's other things. There's the library right. there that's going to lose most of its money. The fire, the fire department. Yep. A new hotel was built in Peekskill just down the road. 20% of their business yeah. is energy related. Right. That's going to go. The delis, the yep. restaurants. I mean, it just kept every day we found more and more things. So uh, I think they finally heard us screaming and yelling, and they created this task force, which we'll see where that goes. Yeah. I mean, I'm on it, and it's... It looks like they have the right approach, but I don't know how much results we're going to get from it, but at least we woke and, them up in those regards. Well, and the fact that you're on it is comforting, but the, the reason why I sued, and by the way, yeah. this has nothing to do with the nuclear debate. Right. Right. It doesn't matter if you live in anywhere in Westchester or right near Indian Point, and it doesn't matter if you are for or against the closure right. of Indian Point or for or against nuclear power. Take those aside. Right, exactly. The fact that the state did not follow the law with regard to environmental law on this, the biggest environmental issue we're ever going to deal with, the closing of a nuclear power plant, for God's sakes, and they just skirted the law and didn't deal with anything, which the, the environmental impact statement, the SECRA law, State Environmental Quality Review Act, is there to protect not just the environment, but to protect taxpayers and everybody else, right. because under that, they've got to figure out before they reach a conclusion on whether to close it, they've got to figure out what are the mitigating factors. How are we, under the law, how are we going to deal right. with these issues of lack of energy, of economics, of taxes, of right. whatever? Whatever. That now, if is let to stand that they didn't have to do this, task force is nice. Task force has no legal authority. No. It's pure political appointees by the governor. Whatever you come up with could be willfully ignored. It doesn't matter. So the lawsuit is there is to protect everyone, pro and con Indian Point. It's there to protect all of us. The points I've been making, in, uh, we only had one meeting so far, and, the, the, and I stressed with them on the phone even before the meeting, and I reiterated it in the meeting. This has to be real. Mm -hmm. We can't be giving false information. We can't right. be giving false hope. We can't be giving, you know, rosy outlooks. We have to be honest, and if things aren't working a certain way, we have to say it. Uh, decommissioning, I should say, is a process that we're all just learning about, yeah. and as you mentioned, it could go up to 60 years yep. just for uh, dismantling and, you know, redevelopment of that property. What does that mean? How are we going to get those tax Property won't be yeah, redeveloped. Yeah, exactly. In most, in most likelihood, the property will not be redeveloped. There was an article the other day, I think in the Wall Street Journal, about the, the decommissioning of nuclear power plants in the world is a very lengthy, right. misunderstood process because they don't really know how to decommission, believe right. it or not, exactly. and uh, very, very, very expensive. Yes. And the money that is in this decommissioning account, if you will, right. is so short. Trust fund, as they call it. Yeah, trust fund. It, it, it's so short funded, which means the taxpayers are going to get a double whammy. You're going to get increased electricity costs, and you're going to get right. a bailout, exactly. which is on top of the bailout you're paying here for the upstate nuclear power plants. Now, I went to school in Oswego, yeah. and I have a lot of friends up there. Right on the lake. Uh, it was a beautiful place. Yeah, it is, it and is. And actually, some friends of mine work at the plant up there, and I was getting calls from them uh, a year or so Where ago. You, yeah. Please, you know, support the, the Zero Emissions Initiative right. or whatever they're calling it, which is why they gave the money. Right. Uh, while we're all paying on our uh, bills each month for them to stay yeah. open. Um, I understand their their concerns. Uh, the ones we're having now, they had last year. That's right. They were bailed out, uh, so we'll see where we are. Yeah. But the point is, it's a real scary thing for everyone living near the plant. I know the, I just mentioned there's that um, nuclear um, anti-nuclear uh, component, but right. we're, we're putting all that aside because yeah. that that that's not even part of the discussion. We know it's closing. Right. Um, we'll see what goes, and we'll work closely mm -hmm. together in a bipartisan way to make sure it. And and we so do again, my can. my lawsuit is if it's going to close, and my lawsuit is not necessarily to keep the plan open. If it's going to close, it must comply with right. the law, so our rights, taxpayers, right. ratepayers, are protected. Yeah. In addition to the environment. Exactly. 
Moving on to... Uh, <laughs> Why are we run again? <laughs> oh, I know. My wife asks me that all the time, every, every time. No, but uh, it, is, it is important to have people with experience in place to carry on these mm -hmm. issues because once you leave office or once someone leaves office, the issue doesn't leave. That's right. You need someone there. Right. So uh, we want to keep going and finish this thing out. Um, there's an, a, a few capital projects that we've been working on Countywide, mm -hmm. there's a, quite a number up where I yeah. am. For some reason, up up where I am, uh, we own the county owns a lot of roads and parks. Down county, they own a lot of pools and right. uh, yeah. amusement <laughs> park. But uh, yeah. um, so we've been doing a lot throughout the county. What are some of the bigger ones countywide that we should consider? Well, I mean, your area. I think yeah. you, you've talked about this in the past too, like Blue Mountain. We've, right. we've made some improvements. George's Island. We yep. made improvements More to coming. some of the streets. Uh, Albany Post yeah. Road near Sprout. Uh, that bridge. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of different things. Washington Avenue. Yeah. Um, and you know the the big stuff like the airport, right. that's which what, there's that's a lot of misconception yeah. certainly for people around the airport. Uh, we're not selling it. We are. It's it would be a lease and a private partnership right. under a federal law. So we could use the money that's accumulated there and trapped there, but we could right. use it for general purposes like roads right. and bridges or, or police officers or parks. Um, and this lease, which would be agreed upon by the county right. board, uh, would have all the do's and don'ts. Right. You cannot expand the airport, right. cannot expand the runways, you cannot expand the gates, which limits the number right. of flights, so it does not become a LaGuardia North. Exactly. You know, so there's a lot of misinformation by some, uh, but by and large, most people agree it's a, it's a pretty good airport and it's a good thing. And for the traveling public, you know, I understand you go to that airport and the terminal was crowded because 30% yeah. of that space was recaptured after 9-11 right. by TSA. Right, right. So you have a couple delays and you're sitting on luggage and that's not a great yeah. experience, but it's a great place to go if you're going down to Florida or wherever. Right. The thing that people have to realize, and I think most do, when we talk about 0% mm. uh, taxes and keeping things under control, you still have to bring in new revenue. You have, you have to. to find ways right. to do that. Think out of the box. Right. This is one way of doing that. Um, we're hoping that we're going to get a, a, a really good deal. The initial deal was about 100, about 15 million initially, right. uh, and then five million a year. Yeah, after about 140 that. million yeah, total. Total. So th those are things. Yeah. We'll see what the what the RFP comes back, and then yeah. we go through the process. But we also have another major project we were able to get to the finish line, and that's at least county purposes till now it's local is the North 60 yep. biotech uh, that's that's huge for the county once yep. you explain that and you know thank you for all your support on this and and advice along the way and one thing that we have to look at is the knee jerk reaction can't be to tax right. additionally right what do we need next year you have the challenge and it's hard is to hold down expenses right. and find new areas of revenue without just going to the taxpayer so we have all these assets that we've been sitting on as a county, accumulated properties, right. buildings, vacant property, and it's just sitting there. You know, it's like, I hate to say it, but it's like keeping all of your money in your passbook savings and getting 10 cents a month in interest as opposed to playing the market or whatever. And when a government owns property, you yeah. collect no taxes. Nothing. It's, so it's, it's not it's sitting there, you. not it's, getting anything. It's an expense always, right, right. not, not exactly. in the revenue. Right. People need to know that. So we've had this, these 60 acres of undeveloped land on the Grasslands campus, right. which is where the Med Westchester Medical Center is. And in the past, it's always, we'll leave it for future right, generations. Right. We think the future is now. And so we've got a developer that looks to do a $1.2 billion all private money for research and development, biotech, life sciences, medical, There'll be some light retail and a hotel. And this is money that will bring right. in, first of all, 12,000 jobs when it's exactly. completed. That's how you get the economy going, put people to work, how they pay their taxes, and how we bring in newer revenue. It'll also pay in, in rent and taxes $15 million a year. And it, it's how you keep the county moving right. in a direction that people want to live here, want to work here, that companies will relocate. And it complements very well the medical center, right. New York Medical College, which is there, uh, the Children's Hospital, which is you know world renowned, but a hotel there makes right. it even better. 
So there are a lot of different things, but these are the kind of projects yeah. that we've been working on that make a lot of sense for everybody. And it's long-term planning, you know. Yep. Some of it's going to be in, in a short term. It's, right. it's a project that's going to build over about 20 years, right? A lot right? of construction jobs. Yeah, so yeah. it's not a one and, one no, and done. No, it's in it's multi-phases. Gonna, it's gonna, yeah, it should yeah, be a decade. It's going to keep going. Yep. So it's, it's, we're all going to be seeing it. Yeah. After we're out of office and retired, right. we're going to be driving by and say, Maybe using that facility yeah, one day as we get <laughs> yeah. older. Who knows? <laughs> right. So, yeah, and as you mentioned up in my area, we have some uh, infrastructure projects going yep. on. You always have to look at the, we, we redid all uh, of the county owned part of mm -hmm. Main Street, 202. Uh, we're looking, as you mentioned, Washington Street's going to be done hopefully this year or next. We're in the pro design process for right. that. The parks, we have some beautiful county parks. Yep. Blue Mountain has done quite a bit. And um, uh, George's Island had a whole new boat area done yeah. the only area th of the county owned in the north right. uh, that has that and now we're going to be doing all new electrical a lot of a lot of groups go there some big pavilions there that have mm -hmm. a big group and they need an upgrade to all the electrical and everything there so that's and bathrooms are all going to be improved and you know the partners that we have not just in the county but supervisor Puglisi right. in Cortland uh, Mayor Catalina exactly. in, in Peekskill. Supervisor Grace in Yorktown. Su Supervisor Grace in Yorktown. And so we work with everybody. Yeah. You know, th the, the hyper-partisanship that we're seeing in Albany or in Washington, we, don't, we do don't need to deal with that. And we don't. And, you know, we get questions about the Paris Accord and yeah. Russia. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Direct them where they should go. We're more concerned about picking up the garbage, exactly. making jobs available, and, and growing the economy, those right. kind of things. And that's where we work very well in a bipartisan way. And on the environmental front, we do, we do quite a bit in that regard. And one of the things that we've teamed up on with everybody is this uh, Anchorage barge yeah. uh, plan by yeah. the Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. um, the Hudson River obviously is precious to all of us, but in my area, it's the historic That's center right. of the of the creation of our country, as far as I'm That's concerned. Right. And um, so we, from county to county, from uh, uh, level to level of government, from party to yep. party, we've all come together. And that's another issue that really has brought everyone together. Yes, we're, we've been, you and I, very outspoken from the very yeah. beginning on the Coast Guard and their process. Um, the fact that they want to put these barges, which for people who don't understand, this would be a giant parking lot for yes. these massive barges with no time certainty of how long they can stay exactly. which means they could live there not park there and they could go a mile off the coast and you know we've all worked very hard not just to clean up the Hudson exactly. River but to make it useful to use it as an attraction for tourism and for businesses and for right. people to live and the last thing we want is to make a security target right, exactly. there in addition to any environmental issues we might have to deal with, yeah, hazardous. Yeah. And, you know, so uh, I know Senator Murphy's been very, very helpful with this, Assemblyman Byrne, um, and really everybody has worked, in a, again, in a very yeah. bipartisan way yeah. with one voice, which is important. It's very, very important because, you know, we not against commerce, the river. No, 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 That's absolutely. the beginning of our history is the yeah. commerce up and down the Hudson. But That's right. But we just don't want it to be in a dangerous, environmentally right. uh, sensitive area, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah. And uh, one last topic, speaking of environment, is the <coughs> sustainable Westchester mm -hmm. announcement we had recently, actually in Peekskill. Yep. Uh, I want you to say a little bit about that. That's a wonderful initiative. Yeah, it's a good thing. You know, look, when we talk about Indian Point and why we think it's important, because it, it does produce energy reliably right. that we need, it is safe. The nu Nuclear Regulatory Commission gives it its highest rating all the time. It's controversial, I get it, but it is needed. We also know that we can have an all of the above approach. Right. And there's no reason why wind and in particular solar right. could not be part of that. So we want to move that agenda. We passed a right. solar tax credit and renewed it again in Westchester, which is helping right. people buy and save some money when they do buy solar panels. But as part of this Solarize or sustainable Westchester, right. you know, we are now in a consortium with others, including in the northern part, Peak Skills right. involved in it. And um, it's getting people access to these companies right. that do this uh, to save money and so I think that's a that's a good thing yeah. w but we got to be realistic you know some people are uh, screaming and shouting close Indian Point because we're gonna go all mm -hmm. solar it, it is an impossibility right. at least now and probably for the next several decades 
So there's no reason why we can't begin that process right. and, and have that balance. So solar Yeah, and it's is working important. for individual families, yeah, individual buildings. Yeah. Um, well, Tim Carey, who's way. our energy czar, right, who lives in, he has it. In, in Cortland, he has it on his house. He just told me the other day, his bill went from about $250 a month to $14 a month. That's it's, pretty big. There's a lot of people around doing it, and I, we, we applaud them and we'll help yeah. them. Um, but to do it at, in a large scale yep. for replacement of, of uh, two, 2,000 right. megawatts uh, no. is not going to happen no. anytime soon. But we'll support all the alternatives. Yep. And we'll support anyone who wants to help us bring this county forward in a positive mm. way, and that's what we're trying to do as a group. We'll continue to do that, and um, we'll get into the budget season before we know it. I know. And uh, w we have the summer to start planning for that, or you, your, your <laughs> staff does. We don't see it until the fall, Yeah. Uh, but we're looking forward to m working together and making things happen throughout the county. So no, I appreciate it. I thank you, Legislator Testa, for everything you're doing, not just for your district, but you have a vision of countywide, which is important. And, um, yeah, I want people to stay in touch, too. Yeah. You know, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. You have questions, email me or, or tweet, and we'll get exactly. back to you. Very good. Well, thanks again John, for your thank time. You. Appreciate you it. You too. Well, I want to thank County Executive Rob Bastarino for again taking time out of his busy schedule to sit down with me and go over the topics that I know are interested to you. Uh, we have a lot to do. We've done a lot over the last seven years, seven and a half years now. Uh, there's a lot more to get done, and we're going to do that, and we're committed to it. Um, just so you know, you can contact me in many ways. You can call my office, which is 914-995-2828. You can email me at jgtesta at verizon.net, or you can go to my website, johngtesta.com, and contact me through any of those sources. And I'll be happy to get back to you and discuss whatever issues you have on your mind or answer your questions. So thanks again for joining me, and we'll see you on the next On Topic show.